even before you look at the graph, although based on Tukey's work, we know that it's always a very good idea to look at graphs before you analyze the data, you can understand the shape of that relationship between x1 and y by looking at the signs of the first term and the second term in the equation. If the first term is negative and the second term is positive, that is the kind of line that you expect to see. And the way to think about these lines is, well, we start with a linear trend, which in this case is negative, but then we have a positive nonlinear term. So the curve tries to become positive. Here, we start with a positive linear term, linear trend, and then it becomes even more positive. In this case, we start with a negative trend, and it becomes more negative, with considering the quadratic term. And finally, we have a positive linear trend, but then, because of the negative quadratic, it turns that way. So what we argue, Jason Pierce and I argue in that paper, is that, sure, it's important to understand if we have a linear trend in the data. However, eventually, if we go higher and higher along the x-axis, eventually, it is likely that that relationship will turn nonlinear. So we need to understand where is that inflection point? Where is that? Where does a trend change from being linear to uh, neutral or change it from positive to negative or negative to positive? Because if you believe from a practical standpoint that increasing x1 will give you more and more of the goodies, you will get more and more benefits, let's say more firm growth, faster and faster and faster growth, will lead to more and more and more profits, you will continue to accelerate the growth of the firm. But at some point, you may see that that growth is too fast for your situation, and you may not get the results that you're anticipating, or it may, you may even get negative results. The same thing with individual traits. One of the examples we give in the paper is the example of conscientiousness. And there's a linear relationship between conscientiousness and job performance. But at one point, being too conscientious on the job may lead to rigidity or maybe lack of creativity or maybe paying attention to the letter of the law as opposed to the spirit of the law. And that may lead to no further improvements in performance or even perhaps a negative relationship eventually as well. Uh, again, that's what we call the too much of a good thing effect. And that effect, the presence of that effect, can be tested in your data set using a regression model that includes a quadratic term. Uh, 